Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Christensen Meyer France and today I'm going to be explaining to you about what is FPGA. So I'll be going through briefly of what FPGA stands for, the functionalities of FPGA. Also, I'll be going through a little bit of the history of FPGA, when it was invented, who invented them, and upon its introduction, how is it uh, more useful to consumers compared to their predecessor models. So also I'll be uh, mentioning some of the advantages of FPGA compared to other programmable circuits. And I'll also be giving an example of how FPGA is, is really useful in modern applications. Uh, aside from that, uh, last but not least, I'll be discussing the difference between timing and functional simulations. So without further ado, let's uh, get started. So first, what does FPGA stands for? So FPGA actually stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. It is an integrated circuit designed to be configured by a customer or hardware designer after the manufacturing of the circuit. So this is where the field programmable name comes from. And you might wonder, how is this possible? So it is configurable because it contains an array of programmable logic blocks. And these logic gates can be interwired together with multiple different possible combinations. Usually this is programmed using hardware designer language or known as HDL. So a little bit of history of FPGA. FPGA was initially invented by Zilink, a company founded by Ross Freeman and Bernard von der Schmidt. Upon its introduction, FPGA is generally known as more, the more innovative version of the programmable read-only memory or known as PROM or programmable logic devices, or usually known as PLD. Unlike PROMs and PLDs, which programmable logics are hardwired between logic gates, FPGA offers a field programmable gates and gate interconnectors. Thus, the advantages of FPGA is that it is reprogrammable, it is, thus it is flexible to different types of customizations, and also it offers much more scale, scalability to keep up with modern computer requirements. Moreover, it offers greater logic density, embedded processors, DSP blocks, and clocking among other prominent features. Usually FPGAs are ideal for systems which requ requires consistent updates. And also it is actually a cost-effective solution for companies because they don't have to invest in a brand new hardware equipment just to get updated with the more modern and more complex technology systems that is required for their daily activities. So one demographic which FPGA is useful is in digital enterprises. So in this sector, companies that want to stay ahead of their competition usually uses FPGA technology which allows them to create a faster prototyping and as well as testing their products to their consumers and as well as their programmers. So the result is that it requires lower engineering as well as production cost. And also, uh, like mentioned before, without the need to spend much more money on buying new hardware uh, equipments. Last but not least, uh, what are the differences between timing and functional simulations? S to simplify everything, the main difference is only how the simulation results is able to imitate the actual circuit. So timing simulations yields the behavior more similarly to the actual hardware. However, this will take longer time to obtain the results. Functional simulations uses the least amount of time however it imitates the least characteristics of the actual hardware both of these methods are useful depending on the specific situation so thank you so much for watching that's all for today 
and everything I want to explain for today. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.